when you think hybrid, your mind most likely wanders towards this car. The Prius, which showed the world that hybrid cars could both be reliable and efficient almost 30 years ago. But today, Porsche has turned that definition on its head. See, unlike Toyota, Porsche has taken the Formula One approach to what a hybrid drivetrain can actually achieve. And by utilizing a trick new drivetrain system co-developed with Rimats, this new hybridized version is capable of some pretty impressive feats. Things like an electrically assisted turbocharger that achieves full boost three times faster than the outgoing model, which not only helps the new 3.6 liter flat six create less emissions at full tilt, but adds a healthy dose of horsepower and torque over the previous GTS, which, believe it or not, makes this new 992.2911 GTS faster around the Nürburgring than the outgoing 992.1 Turbo S. Yeah, that's big. Now, the new GTS features a small 1.9 kilowatt battery, which is not enough to offer any electric-only driving, but instead offers significant performance benefits by eliminating turbo lag and adding instantaneous torque fill across the rev range. The battery, which is compact and lightweight, and only about the size of a conventional 12-volt car battery, paired with a new featherweight and efficient electric motor that's integrated into the gearbox, serve up an extra 56 horsepower and 110 foot-pounds of torque by themselves. All combined, drivetrain is capable of making 541 horsepower, 450 pound-feet of twist. That's 61 horsepower and 30 pound-feet more than you got in the old version. And yeah, we can complain about the fully digital gauge cluster, I miss the dials, and the fact that unfortunately there will be no manual option on any 2025 911, and there's no left-hand side key turn feature, just a button you push. Boop. But I think we're all missing the point. This isn't a purest nightmare. This changes sports cars forever. Porsche says the new GTS is capable of making the sprint to 60 in three seconds flat and has a top speed of 194 miles per. The hybrid system doesn't stop with straight line speed because it's also responsible for powering Porsche's new active anti-roll system, which uses hydraulic and electrical actuators to adjust the car's roll rates during corners. Pretty trick stuff, Porsche. And in addition to all that, rear wheel steering now comes standard. You want that. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yeah, all this new tech and standard equipment can't be doing us any favors at the scales. But get this, the new GTS only weighs 50 kilograms or about 110 pounds more than the outgoing model. A weight trade-off that, according to the lap times anyway, it's more than made up for. This 992.2 is a hybrid masterclass on what the future of this technology can mean in the arena of back and crazy performance, all while fighting the stricter than ever emission protocols for all future sports cars that follow. The magic under the rear deck lid is what Porsche calls the T-Hybrid system that not only kills turbo lag, but is the first mass-produced thermal recovery unit of its kind ever fitted to a production car. The new turbocharger combined with the highly efficient electric motor raises this car's performance to levels that were once reserved for F1 cars, which interestingly enough, that's exactly where this top tier tech came from. See, Formula One cars have been using hybrid technology since the introduction of the new power unit regulations in 2014, which is the same year the Porsche 919 hybrid was introduced. It was built to dominate the FIA World Endurance Championships and the 24 hour of Le Mans, and it absolutely delivered on that promise. Mm. So, Kind of as a tribute, they built the 919 Evo, and it was built to explore and demonstrate the technological innovations that Porsche had developed over the years of competition. It was an unrestricted powerhouse, powered by a 2-liter V4 turbocharged engine, combined with a hybrid system capable of producing a total of, are you sitting down, 1,160 horsepower. Yeah, that's crazy. And the result? Well, it set a new lap record at the Nürburgring Nordschleife with a time of 5 minutes, 19 seconds, and 55 seconds, which was nearly a minute faster than the previous record that was held for a staggering 35 years. Maybe even more importantly though, the Evo's record-breaking run went viral. Everybody, even my mom heard about it, cementing Porsche's reputation for engineering excellence and innovation for the next generation. This cutting-edge hybrid tech has now trickled down into a road-going Porsche 911. But let's take a step back for just a second, because over the life of the 911, there's only really been a few times the car has undergone major technological changes. There was fuel injection, then turbocharging, then water cooling, and now, well, we have the age of the hybrid. All of these have been necessary advancements for the 911, 
and have each helped not only solidify it as a benchmark of sports car performance, but has also caused it to stand the test of time, making it one of the longest lasting and continuously produced car models in automotive history. Introduced in 1964, the Porsche 911 was delivered with a tiny two liter boxer motor hanging out behind the wrong end of the car. The engine placement, the iconic sloping rear, the round headlights have defined what the 911 is. Well, except for those fried eggs in the 996, but we'll touch on that in just a second. But as the competition started to heat up with the likes of the Chevrolet Corvette, the Jaguar E-Type, and even the introduction of the European style Nissan 240Z back in 1969, well, Porsche knew that they had to go back to the drawing board to blow away the competition. Stuck on using air-cooled flat six motors, seeing as it was the secret sauce that made the 911, well, a 911, they had one option, turbo. The 911 Turbo was introduced at the Paris Auto Show in October of 1974. It sported a 3-liter turbocharged flat-six engine that fired out 260 horsepower. This engine was a significant departure from the naturally aspirated engines that had powered previous 911 models. And uh, because of the vivid way it delivered power, it was nicknamed the Widowmaker. See, thanks to a single relatively large turbocharger that had significant turbo lag, the engine had this tendency of delivering sudden and unexpected power, which was especially dangerous mid-corner, and prompted the car to spin out over end thanks to the rear weight bias layout. But all that danger and performance made the 911 one step ahead of the competition, and it established the turbo as the flagship within the 911 lineup. For 20 plus years, the 911 Turbo was the sports car set in the crosshairs of every other automaker. But in the 1990s, Porsche had a bit of a problem and did something to this day that will ruin Thanksgiving dinner if two Porsche enthusiasts on opposite sides of the spectrum bring it up. We've all been there. The transition from air-cooled to water-cooled engines. Yeah, by the late 1990s, global emissions regulations had become increasingly stringent. Air-cooled engines, although really cool, had difficulty meeting these new standards due to their less efficient cooling and combustion processes. Plus, air-cooled engine designs imposed physical constraints on the engine size and possible packaging configuration. Water cooling, well, it opened up new possibilities in engine design and allowed Porsche to implement more advanced technologies that were simply not feasible with an air-cooled power plant. And in 1998, well, the 996 generation was debuted. Yes, a brand new 911, and purists, well, they hated it. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't doing itself any favors by changing the shape of the headlights, even though the design was influenced by the one, the only Porsche 911 GT1 race car. Yeah, that's sick. But no, what really pissed off the Porsche files was the brand new water pumper out back. But love it, hate it, here is the thing. Truth is, the new 996-911 represented a significant technological and design leap forward, which kept Porsche relevant and the king of the sports car hierarchy. And that brings us back to where we are today, with Porsche's lovable 911 still the gold standard in the yardstick by which all other premium sports cars are measured against. The new hybrid is a necessary evolution of the 911's power plant to stay ahead of the pack and it ticks the box of improving emissions, which was the main goal. But unlike most hybrid systems, Porsche is doing what Porsche does best and has also engineered in a way to improve performance at the same time. So how does it work, Trav? Okay, here's how it works. The new turbocharger has a high-speed electric motor splined to the turbine, which, as we know, is capable of using electricity to spool the turbo instantaneously. But the really clever part here is how it works off-throttle. When just cruising or decelerating, you don't need the extra boost from the turbo. So instead, Porsche uses the turbine wheel as a sort of air brake for the exhaust gases and controls the flow through the catalytic converters. By slowing exhaust gases down, the catalytic converters stay cool for longer, which increases their efficiency. With a conventional engine, turbocharged or otherwise, the way we control catalyst temperature is by enriching the fuel mixture, or literally throwing a bit of extra fuel out the tailpipe, which not only actually increases hydrocarbon emissions, but decreases fuel economy. Porsche's method here not only lowers emissions, but raises fuel economy without sacrificing engine performance. And it doesn't stop there. Because, see, while they're using the turbocharger as an air brake to slow down those exhaust gases, it acts as an electrical generator and actively helps recharge the battery, which then in turn can spin up the turbocharger when you mat the accelerator. 
it's not free energy because well that's it's not a thing but this comes pretty damn close it's a very clever system and we can't wait to get our hands on one now you might be thinking this all sounds a bit complicated and potentially really expensive to repair down the road and you might not be wrong but remember Porsche literally invented the hybrid back in the year 1900, and the fact that they own 40% of Rimats, combined with the fact that the development team has logged over 3 million miles of testing on the system, means it's probably pretty good. All trims of the 911 have been updated for 2025, and there are plenty of meaningful and clever design updates throughout the range, but it's the GTS that represents the next major milestone in the Porsche story. An incredible hybrid drive system that uses an electronically assisted turbocharger. A trick roll control system that actively stabilizes the car under a variety of cornering conditions. And world-class four-wheel steering that not only improves maneuverability at low speeds, but makes the car more agile and feel more planted as the Speedo cracks past triple digits. The 2025 GTS officially kicks off the hybrid phase for the 911. And as much as you might not like it, remember, People weren't crazy about turbocharging or water cooling either. And just look where we're at now. So that is the new 911 GTS. What do you guys think about it? Are you excited or do you think Porsche is on the wrong track here? Personally, I'm in love with this thing and I haven't even driven one yet. I'm just stoked for the future of 911s, but I will admit, I love the sound and experience of my old naturally aspirated 997. Thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing to Ideal and turning on that notification bell if you enjoyed this video. Like the vid, it really helps us out. And check out some of these Ideal vids over here. I'm Brad the Financial Cowboy. This is Ideal. We'll see you next week. And promise me one thing, keep living the Ideal lifestyle, hybrid style.